Welcome, as everybody gets uh, into the webinar, um, this is Shelley Feist with the Partnership for Food Safety Education. And today we are presenting Winner, Winner Family Dinner. We have a great presentation today. That's a combination of your excellent engagement in the partnership through the 30 Minute Meals Safe Recipe Contest and the fact that it is now National Food Safety Education Month and that the partnership has been busy creating some terrific new tools for you that we're gonna talk about. Um, so today we'll talk about the story of your dinner, new resources, a terrific new safe recipe activity for middle school that any of you who work with children might find fun and since it's online, easy to use if children are not in this classroom. We're going to talk about the contest, the Safe Recipe Contest Overview, and we're going to announce the grand prize winner of the contest. So hold on, here we go. We are also going to welcome today, uh, as we talk about the contest, our special guest and judge, Sally Squires. Uh, she's an award-winning former health and medical reporter for the Washington Post. Uh, she's done a lot of great work in public health, and so we'll have a lot of fun talking with Sally shortly. Next. Uh, many of you are here, and you'll learn CEUs. Um, the objectives today are we're going to talk about behavioral health messaging and new resources. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about recipes with safety instructions um, and why they're a terrific tool to use with people, particularly now that everybody is cooking more at home. And uh, a little bit about how to collaborate with community partners and stakeholders this month, Food Safety Education Month, and through the Story of Your Dinner campaign. We love your questions. We will have time for questions. So to ask a question, use the box on the right of the screen. There's a section called questions. Um, put questions there at any time and we will get to them. After the webinar, you're going to receive a brief survey and we ask that you fill this out. It's great help to us. It gives us feedback so we can improve our programs for you. That's why we're here to engage you, to give you new resources. So please fill that out. Next. CEUs are being offered today um, from ANFP, CDR, and NEHA. You can download the certificates right here. You'll see in the box on the right, there's a section called handouts. The uh, CEU certificates are right there right now. So don't hesitate, I would download it. Uh, We'll also make them available through the follow-up email we do. And once this webinar gets posted to our recorded webinar page at fightback.org, uh, the CEU certificates will be there too. So you have many great ways to get your certificate. And we'll cover this later before we close also. So uh, we are really excited to offer today a prize uh, for your participation in today's webinar. Uh, to win, you do need to be here live on the webinar. And the prize is a three week meal kit subscription to HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a PFSE partner. And we're very happy today to, to offer this um, and thank them for making possible this, this prize for today's uh, webinar. Next. We're going to launch a poll. We're really curious about the contest. If you didn't enter the contest, we'd love to know why. Uh, so please take a moment. We'll leave this open for about a minute, and then we will check back in on the re on the responses. If you didn't enter the contest, tell us why. All right, if you haven't had a chance to vote, would you please vote on the poll or take the poll? 
about why you maybe didn't answer enter the contest? If you did, of course, don't answer this poll. Okay, um, Michelle, can you show us what people had to say? Oh, people are too busy. 60% of you are too busy. And 20%, you weren't sure if you were eligible. 20 didn't know. All right, terrific. That's very helpful. Thank you so much for that, um, that feedback about your time. Um, if you've been with us before for Food Safety Education Month, and uh, if you've been with us before when we talk about holiday food safety, then you've probably heard about the story of your dinner. Uh, the story of your dinner is a fantastic effort we've developed with some leading industry partners and retailers to really put food safety in the context of the joy of food preparation, rather than have it be an add-on or a, you know, have fun cooking, but by the way, this, we've been working on various ways to bring food safety into that joy of meal preparation. So um, at the next slide, let's talk a little bit about what we've got going this year for the story of your dinner. Uh, for one thing, I'm very pleased that we've been able to translate many more of the resources of story of your dinner and produce some new resources this year that are, are in Spanish. Um, some of them we're going to show you in a new video today about your baby and food safety. But please check out our Spanish language uh, site for Story of Your Dinner. You're going to find a lot of great material there. And we'd love to hear from you if you use the material. Um, that is something we really worked on this year. And I think you're going to find a lot of use for these resources. Next. And we'd like to preview the new Your Baby and Food Safety video, which is available in English and Spanish. Now that your bundle of joy has finally arrived, how do you feed your baby so he or she grows up healthy? Babies and toddlers are more vulnerable to foodborne illness because their immune systems are not developed enough to fight off infections. That's why extra care is required when handling their food. But hey, you're a new parent. You've got those food safety skills, right? Let's go over this together. Hand washing skills are top of the list. A household that washes their hands often is the best place for a baby to grow up healthy. Always use soap and water and lather your hands for 20 seconds. Just enough to sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star twice. A study on mothers with infants less than four months old found that 32% didn't wash their hands after changing the baby's diapers. Even worse, some people change the baby's diapers in the same area that they eat. Now what about your baby's food? How do you prevent the germs that can make your baby sick? Leaving a bottle at room temperature can increase the risk of foodborne illness for your baby. So if you feed your baby formula, mix only enough for one feeding. Refrigerate it right away. And if your baby doesn't eat it, then just throw away the rest of the formula. Clean your baby's feeding items with hot water and soap. Rinse them well and let them dry. And clean and sanitize your bottles and nipples before you use them. Bring up your baby with food safety. Learn more at foodsafety.gov and download your own feeding baby flyer at storyofyourdinner.org. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Michelle's going to take us through uh, a little prompting for me through the middle school activity. I mentioned this at the beginning of the event today. This middle school activity for building safe recipes is aligned with national health and science education standards. It includes a lesson plan for the teacher or parent or instructor, activity guide and objectives, safe recipe style guide, 
and the minim minimum temperature chart, and then five sample recipes. So let's show you where you can find this at fightback.org. Um, it's available as a PDF download, and it's also available here online. As Michelle moves through this, you'll see that it's under our Safe Recipe tabs at fightback.org. It's also right on our homepage under Safe Recipe Lesson. And finally, we've put it in our Featured Resources page so that you can easily find it here, both the online activity and the downloadable lesson plan, lesson guide, and guide for students. We think you'll enjoy it, and we really would love to hear back from you if you use this and what you thought of it and how we might improve it. It includes an online quiz uh, for the students, and they get immediate feedback. So it's a great opportunity for online learning and to bring food safety into some online learning activities for kids this fall. Um, we'll challenge them on fundamentals and uh, have them choose some different practices, choosing what's the safest practice. Thank you, Michelle. And remember at fightbat.org, we have a lot of different uh, activities for kids, um, including story of your dinner activities. This year, we were so proud to have the support of Cargill and Costco Wholesale to be able to launch a 30-minute meals safe recipe contest that would help you, the backfighters, food bloggers, kids, um, anyone who teaches others about food safety to develop a 30-minute meal recipe that includes food safety prompts based on the Safe Recipe Style Guide. And today we're going to talk about the winners. So next. What we looked for in a winning recipe included that it be a main course item that could be prepared in 30 minutes or less and use everyday ingredients, that it incorporated all the necessary steps from the Safe Recipe Style Guide, meaning all the necessary steps for that particular dish, and that there was taste, visual appeal, crowd appeal, and creativity. And we saw some great entries. We're extremely excited to tell you we've put the best entries into a new online cookbook. We're calling the Safe Recipe Cookbook. Two weeks, 10 meals, 30 minutes, um, two weeks worth of simple weeknight meals. Uh, you are going to be the first people to get a copy of the cookbook. So watch your emails. You'll receive a link to download this um, Safe Recipe Cookbook which is really designed for consumers. So it's a great way to do outreach and to bring food safety immediately into the lives of people who are cooking ever more at home right now. A few of the recipes you'll find in the cookbook are what we're calling some honorable mentions. We had so many good recipes that we included uh, a number of them in this cookbook. These are four of them. As you see, there's a great variety, um, delicious and, and simple. So we thank these entries for being part of the contest because I, I personally made one of these myself at the Soba Rainbow Pesto Bowl. It was delicious. I've made it twice. <laughs> Next. Runners up uh, in the contest. Uh, they, these recipes are in the cookbook also, including a, in our three categories for the contest. Backfighters, um, we thank Christine McKinnon for her entry of cowboy beans. Food bloggers, uh, Grace Valio for chicken with sun-dried tomato cream. And in our kids category, we had an entry. Uh, Runner-up entry was Greg Blick's spaghetti squash pasta. Now, before we bring in our esteemed judge, I'll just 
briefly remind you that the contest prize, each of the category winners I just mentioned will receive $50 and our grand prize winner will receive a $100 cash prize and their video made into, or their recipe made into a, a professional video in both English and Spanish uh, by a really terrific company who has just created a new video for us. And we're going to show you that right now. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. You can find that at storyviewdinner.org, again, in English and Spanish. Um, our grand prize finalists, as we move towards our announcement here, we had three really terrific and very different recipes um, in each of our prize categories. Our backfighters are health and food safety educators, and um, we had an entry from Carrie Watkins. Our food blogger category um, finalist is Amanda Townsend with turkey tacos with cilantro sour cream. And in our kids category, we had an entry from Aiden Whitehead, barbecue pizza muffins. Next. I want to bring in our special guest and judge, Sally Squires. Because Sally, Sally really tested these recipes with her family. And what I love about having Sally involved in our contest is, is that uh, I think throughout her career and her work, um, she's always married, you know, health, prevention, um, food, uh, good nutrition, good health. So thank you, Sally. If we could bring Sally in to talk a little bit about her experience with the contest. <laughs> Thanks, Shelly. I'm not seeing you. You're not seeing me? Okay, so. Does that help? Yes. Yeah. I that see did it. Okay. I'm frozen. Right. But I'm Great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, no, I it was, really, really, it was, I it was to... very interesting. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed testing the recipes. Great. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about your experience and, and what you think of this idea of recipes that would include safety instructions. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, I think it's it's right on because we, as we know that food safety is important at any time. And I can't think of, of a greater importance during a pandemic when we're all trying to our best to stay healthy in lots of ways. So I think it, it's a really smart idea. And the three, I'm, I made the turkey tacos, the barbecue pizza muffins, and the spinach frittata. The first two, the turkey tacos and the barbecue pizza muffins, I made and shared it in socially distant way with our 
son and daughter-in-law and their four kids uh, in Fairfax, Virginia. And so we went out and actually ate on their front porch because we you know, had to be socially distant. But the, the kids range in age from five to nine. And, um, and so there's a five-year-old, uh, there are two seven-year-olds and there's a nine-year-old. And they, they all liked them both. Um, they, I was a little surprised that for the barbecue pizza muffins, a couple of the kids felt that the barbecue sauce, which I, I got honey chipotle barbecue sauce, it was a little spicy for them, which surprised me a bit. But, uh, but they all ate it. And I know that our son actually texted me the next day and because we, we left the leftovers and uh, he said, oh, I had a, a pizza muffin for lunch the next day and it was great. So, um, so I think that those were some real winners. And then the spinach frittata um, I made for my husband and me and I wouldn't have put some of the ingredients together, but it was actually quite delicious and very fluffy. And I make a lot of frittatas. So um, I was really actually, Pleased that I wouldn't have put pear and walnuts in, but it was it was quite good. Excellent. So these are kid tested. I mean, who could be tougher? They are kid tested. And I can tell you, I saw the poll saying that people think that they didn't really have time. And I can tell you that the recipes really took me about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe 25 at most. And for, you know, if I wasn't well organized in the kitchen and on a particular recipe, but they were very simple to make. Um, my husband and I are not, we are social distancing in, in large ways because of ages and underlying health conditions. So we don't actually go grocery shopping. So I ordered everything online and had it delivered and uh, I was able to get everything that was needed and it was very simple and it was not expensive. So I think that those are maybe some take homes that might help other people. Yeah, definitely. And I'll tell you, we, you know, we, we did judge for the timing to make sure that that the recipes that made the finals could be prepared in the time in the 30 minutes so that's important why don't you you know i've been so curious to talk to you in this context about you know your work in in health and communicating on health and i'm wondering if you since so many people on the webinar today um work to communicate to their communities why food safety is important many of them are also nutrition educators or dietitians so I'd love your thoughts as a communications professional who's got many years of experience, both with the Washington Post, but um, in a very large PR firm, what your thoughts are, or what your advice to them might be about bringing this sort of tool to communities. Well, one, I, th I think it's obviously important to keep things simple. We've, we've seen, and I think this has been underscored a lot, during the pandemic that simple messages really are the ones that people remember. And so one of the things that, that I think is important and is that it's having a, a thermometer to check the temperatures. Obviously washing our hands is, I should really start there. That's become more important than ever for so many reasons. And, uh, and I think that we can't emphasize that enough but also really having that thermometer. So I, I told Shelly this story that I invested in a, in a rather pricey thermometer from Thermoworks. I have no, no uh, financial interest in any of this, but I had done a, um, I'd looked at, a, at readings of various thermometers and I decided that that was something I really needed a better cooking thermometer than what I had. And I'm so glad I have it. I really find it helpful. And I think that it's really critical to check the temperatures in food, in your fridge, and in your freezer. So those are three Fs to kind of remember that you really do want to make sure that everything is working well, that you're, many of the newer, newer refrigerators now have built-in thermometers, but those also can break down. And so it's not a bad idea to have another thermometer handy and make sure that you're food is being kept at the right temperature and that, you know, things, as we know, we keep hot food hot and cold food cold and nothing should stay out for longer than two hours. And, and I think it's just, this is a time when we're really emphasizing good health in so many ways. And the last thing anybody wants to have in the middle of a pandemic is, is a foodborne illness. So I think it's just mm -hmm. something we all have to really pay attention to. Yeah. I think it's so right to say that during this pandemic, with the stresses on the healthcare system and the fact that people are trying to protect themselves, this is not a time that you want to have to go to the doctor because of a serious foodborne illness. And exactly. um, it's, 
it's quite common as we know uh, we wish it weren't and that's what we work at <laughs> so right. um, yeah and with all the more more people cooking at home and the combination of easy recipes we now have you know it seems like a good time to really get this information out to households yes yeah. and i think the other thing that we tend to do is uh, particularly as we're cooking more with frozen and and canned foods, which are great to have and they're shelf stable. And, and you, you know, if you're trying to limit shopping trips and and budgets and all different kinds of things, they are fantastic foods. But I have seen quite a number of recipes that call for vegetables and sometimes fruit, but mostly vegetables to frozen vegetables to be used straight out of the freezer. And that's really not the way manufacturers uh, intended them to be used. It's really important, even if you're making a cold soup, that you cook those vegetables first. And I've seen I've seen recipes from some really stellar places, great magazines and also online resources that that really skip that step. So so one thing that I think it's important to just remind us all is to read the packages carefully and follow the cooking instructions that the manufacturer puts on them and as well as the um, as well as the temperature control. So for example, my husband and I've become fans of some of the meatless burgers and you know and I you know those might be some that you you might think well maybe I don't have to cook it quite to the temperature but if you read the package that's what it says that you need to cook it to I think it's 160 or 165 degrees internal temperature so those are just things that if if you didn't read the package you might make some assumptions that wouldn't bode well in the long term yes that's that reading package instructions is so important and um, when it comes to frozen, I salute the frozen food um, industry. They're involved Absolutely. with the partnership because they're taking this head on, including that um, sometimes frozen food products are used for teething of babies. So um, yes, yes. It, and that need, and that's it's fine if you want to do that, but you want to cook it first and then refreeze it because it's not um, it's not intended. Those products are not intended to be used raw because so that's basically what you're getting from the freezer and um and so you know i i think i've shared this story with shelly but but i about a year ago i wrote a, a story for the washington post food section on um on food safety and and one of the things that i i talked to two microbiologists so i think it was it was um i'm just looking to remind myself but i think it's ben chapman and don schaffner who i understand are very well known and to this group and they they write the barf blog which is one of my the favorite names of any blog i can think of and they were the ones who said you make sure that if you're taking frozen peas out to give to a child or you want to make a, a, a a cold soup with some frozen veggies make sure that you have cooked them first and because it's just it's so easy and many recipes say just take them directly from the freezer not the thing to do well that is this has been a great summary of some of the ways we prepare foods quickly and also need to be reminded of food safety and we the partnership we're committed to safe recipes um, in fact if you go back we've been developing them for a few years and there are some recipes we have that include frozen products um, as time savers, um, and so we cover the importance of reading instructions. I think we're going to move ahead here because I want to also remind people two things. One, we want your questions. If you have any questions for Sally or for me about anything the partnership's doing, um, remember to enter your questions under questions. And two, um, I don't know that I mentioned for the prize, we will. We want you to put into the chat. I guess we're going to come to that shortly on the pledge. Why don't we go to the next slide <laughs> so I can talk about that? Okay, we're going to first announce our winner. Um, well, again, multiple judges. Sally Squires being one of them. Sally Squires uh, grandchildren being among them. Who are, we all know kids are are always going to be quite particular. Our grand prize winner of the 30 minute meal safe recipe contest is next Carrie Carrie Watkins and the spinach frittata with goat cheese which Sally made and I didn't know Sally was a frittata expert so this was great that she tried it um 
Carrie is at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and she's actually interested in, in studying, she is studying nutrition and dietetics. So she's going to join the uh, field of uh, dietet dietitian. She wants to be a registered dietitian. She enjoys making fun, creative recipes for friends and family. Um, really happy to have Carrie be part of the contest and with this great recipe. And it really is delicious. What I found was was particularly great about it is it's very light and fluffy. She uses some milk in it, which I I honestly don't always use in my frittatas. And I thought it really made a, a wonderful texture and it's just a great combination of flavors and simple ingredients. Well, I'm gonna try it because I love pears and pears and goat cheese together. So congratulations, Carrie. Carrie's gonna get this frittata recipe built into a beautiful, um, professionally done video. So next slide, please. So glad to have this Carrie be part of the contest. She's not with us today though, because she's probably in class. Um, we want you to join the partnership in taking a pledge to build and share safe recipes. And here's why. Even though the partnership worked to develop the Safe Recipe Style Guide, we've uh, worked closely with Sandra Godwin, who did extensive research on um, observing people preparing poultry. That's part of how the guide got deliver developed. So we've been working on this, but we can't do it alone. And Many of you are the uh, number one source for uh, consumers in your communities on uh, food safety and also on great recipes. So go ahead, we'd love you to take the pledge today. And here's why, if you take the pledge and enter your pledge into the chat box, you're going to be registered. You'll have a chance to win the prize before we end today. So just type into chat, yes, I will build and share safe recipes, or yes, I take the pledge, or yes, I love safe recipes, or yes, I already make safe recipes, and I'm gonna do it even more this year. And then you'll be entered to win the um, the prize. So get on on there and take the pledge. Uh, you wanna win the prize. I would love to win the prize of three weeks of HelloFresh beautiful meal kits. <laughs> uh, so please. Um, take the pledge in the chat. You see the chat box and um, we will pick a, a winner of the prize from the people who take the pledge in chat. Next. And then we also have a poll for you. Now we're really, we thought the contest was fabulous. We enjoyed it greatly and we had some wonderful entries. We're thinking about a future contest, but we're only gonna do it if it's something you all are interested in. So how likely are you to enter a contest like this in the future? Please give us your feedback about a safe recipe contest in the future that we can involve you in. We'll leave this open for about a minute. Please take the poll. We really love to have your feedback. Are you likely, how likely are you to enter a contest like the 30 Minute Meal Safe Recipe Contest? If we were to do another one, let us know. Take the poll. I'm going to ask Michelle here to show us what people said. Maybe. Okay, well, you need to tell us if you say maybe, we want to know. Why the hesitancy? But 34% of you are game and 5% of you are bakers. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Thank you for that feedback. All right, we're coming back at you about that. Uh, we're gonna take a little time for questions and we do have some questions in. Um, as I go to some questions, I do wanna remind you to um, put into the chat if you're taking the pledge so that we can choose from among the people on here, a winner for the prize of the HelloFresh three week subscription. Um, 
we we have a question about frozen vegetables and why do they have to be cooked first and what's the danger um well i will preface this by saying neither myself nor miss squires are microbiologists however i've been working in food safety a long time uh frozen vegetables and frozen fruits have been implicated in outbreaks of different pathogens um with regard to frozen vegetables, uh, listeria has been one of those pathogens. Listeria is not terribly common, but it's very, very dangerous. Um, and in fact, it has the highest ratio of deaths uh, of any foodborne pathogen and also uh, miscarriages. So the reason frozen vegetables should be cooked first is because in many cases they are a, a raw agriculture, you know, they're a raw produce that has not gone through a kill step, has been frozen and comes straight to you um, in the way that a fresh produce might. Now that's delicious, but it also means that it's it's not been, it's not gone through a kill step, that's why. So the danger could be listeria or could be, um, I mean, there's been hepatitis linked right. to, to berries. So a number of things. Did you, you want to add something? I, I, sure. And, and so one of the things that, uh, because I wanted to know those exact questions when I asked the microbiologists and, and it, Shelley's absolutely right that there, these are products and sometimes they're even kind of frozen in the fields. There's, their processes are right near the fields. And so if they're, they really do need to be cooked. When we say cooked, again, follow the package directions. In the case of some things, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they've got to be cooked for 10 minutes. You just want to get them to a certain temperature. So, uh, for example, uh, I think it was Ben Chapman that told me that he makes these smoothies for his kids and he has for a very long time. What he does is he takes frozen berries, which also have been sometimes linked more in Europe than in the U.S. to hepatitis infections and for reasons that are still uh, not completely clear. So what he does is he takes the berries, frozen berries from the freezer, puts them in his microwave for a couple of minutes and um, maybe you know a minute or two and makes sure that they reach a certain internal temperature. And then he either refreezes them or he uses them directly into the smoothie. So if you're adding ice to a smoothie and cold yogurt, you, you won't taste the, you, you, it doesn't slow the process of making the smoothie, but it just it does ensure that the smoothie is safe as well as a cold soup, for example, if you're gonna make that out of those peas that we've been talking about. So back to you, Shelley. Thank you, yes, thank you so much for that. Um, so we had two questions that relate to the Safe Recipe Contest. One is, will we be holding another? And I would say, based on the input we got today, not clear because I don't know, we didn't wanna hear more. We, we, we would love there to be some enthusiasm about it. Um, so unsure about that, but we will we welcome more input from you. Uh, and the second was, did we have any recipes submitted that were unsafe? Um, I will put it this way: we we are looking for recipes that are that follow the safe recipe style guide for a few reasons. One, the style guide was tested. It was a, it was run through some journalists. Uh, for their idea as to whether it would be too much of a burden um, with regard to word count, et cetera, space considerations. And so the guide as developed um, is a consensus between experts in food safety, journalists. So we did receive some recipes that did not follow the guide the way it's uh, written. Um, so those that reached the end of the contest all were absolutely in line with the safe recipe style guide and, and as i say i think as a group if we decide that we'd love to see every recipe out there for consumers start with wash hands with soap and water um, just imagine the impact that could have on not only foodborne infections but other infectious diseases <laughs> if people wash their hands every time properly before they begin to cook all right so that's I have also, and I'm looking for any other questions, but I also want to announce our winner. I think we have a, why don't you go to the next slide, Michelle, and we'll announce our winner. I think that's what's next. No, a reminder about all of our resources. 
we we are constantly communicating with backbiters and uh, we are, are always bringing new resources to your attention. So please make sure you've not only signed up for our emails, but tell your colleagues about it. We won't email you too, too much, but you will need to be on our email list often to hear about events, new resources. Um, next. And of course, we're on social. Please be meet us over there at Fight Back, at Facebook, Twitter. We've started a new Instagram called Safe Recipes, where we are posting safe recipes and pretty looking food. Um, and we're in all these other places on LinkedIn, uh, the Partnership for Food Safety Education uh, features things there. So join us over there. Oh, we're trying something new. We're trying a lot of new things during this whole COVID thing. Um, we're doing a virtual fundraiser. It's called Ready, Set, Cook It Safe. In this virtual fundraiser, which is going to be a lot of fun, uh, basically we're all together cooking a delicious meal on September 24th. There's going to be some amazing prizes. Let me just tell you, one of them is a year's worth of bacon, um, which sounds amazing. So for $25, be part of that event. This uh, this supports the Partnership for Food Safety Education. We are a non-profit organization that relies on grants and contributions. So come and join us at this event. Look for our events page. Next. I'm also so pleased to tell you we are on track for a 2021 Consumer Food Safety Education Conference. You may know we only do these every other year and um, we're going to do it virtual conference this year in March. And we really thought about the fact that now you have our attention, right? That's kind of the theme of this conference. You have our attention. We understand hand hygiene is really important. We also really, um, through COVID, had to look at food and whether it could, it was, you know, a way to carry COVID. Um, so there's a lot of learnings from food safety and health educators that we want to bring to this conference. We want you to be a presenter. So take a look at um, our conference page. I don't know if we, you could just go to fightback.org and look under events and you'll find our conference. Um, submit a short, very short online form and a short video. Our deadline's October 14th, which is really only about a month away. So please check out um, and plan to present at this conference online. All right, we uh, thank you for taking the pledge. If you took the pledge, you were eligible for today's prize, three week meal kit subscription to HelloFresh and a beautiful opportunity to make a delicious meal kit with your family. And our prize winner is Jean Goss. If Jean is still on line here, Jean, you can send a chat message to the organizers and, and tell them, yes, I'm here and I'm so excited to get my HelloFresh meal kits. Um, thanks to HelloFresh for that. And if Jean's not here, I'm gonna look and someone will tell me and then we'll draw somebody else. Um, Hopefully, Jean is here. All right, final reminder about CEUs. Uh, three ways to get them. They're listed here. They're right here on the handouts. That might be the fastest way is just to download it from the handouts. This webinar, like all of our webinars, goes up on our fightback.org website uh, under recorded webinars. You'll always be able to find this there. Next. Thank you, Sally. Not only for Thank just you. being a guest, I mean for your interest and enthusiasm, and and really, it was a lot of fun to work with you on this. Well, it was a lot of fun to work with you, and my pleasure. So thanks a lot. Thank you for highlighting this, and um, we'll we'll be in touch about more. We're going to make everybody's going to make the frittata. That's for sure. Sounds so good. All right, next.
I, I do want to call out two companies that are outstanding supporters of consumer food safety education, um, Cargill and Costco Wholesale. Um, Costco uh, this month is featuring a fe their featured recipe of the month is a safe recipe. We collaborate on that. So if you check out Costco's featured monthly recipe, it's something really delicious. It's not for vegetarians though. <laughs> so thanks to Cargill and Costco. I also want to thank the FMI Foundation. They were instrumental in the development of the Safe Recipe Style Guide, and um, they helped us have the bandwidth to do this contest. So thank you, FMI Foundation, for your support. We have four outstanding Tier 2 partner donors, Cargill, FMI Foundation, NSF International, and the Produce Marketing Association. And for a full list of our partners, please see fightback.org. We now have more than 35 uh, partner contributors to this great effort to give backfighters tools they need to um, connect with consumers. And I think with that, we're, we're done. Let's all go build safe recipes. Jean Goss, our winner, responded. She was on the webinar. She's going to get her gift. And uh, I can't wait till the next time we get together. I, I miss seeing you all in person. And um, we'll see you at our conference, if not before. Thanks, Sally. Bye, everybody. <laughs>